Pets are going to be very, very happy. What do they need? You need to give them sun, three to four hours of direct sunlight a day, good daylight for the remainder of the day. Try and avoid tree roots because tree roots will suck the nutrients out of your garden beds. All right. So we have sun, we have soil. We talked about our double dug French bed and they need water. So there's plan A and plan B. Plan A, hook your tap to your spout, walk around and water your plants. If you're curious how much you use, take a five gallon bucket and wide open, let the water go in and time it. It takes three minutes to fill a five gallon bucket. Divide five by three, you have 1.67 gallons per minute. So say a, a gallon and a half a minute. If it takes me 10 minutes to do my garden, that's 15 gallons of water. If it takes me 20 minutes to do my garden and my lawn, now we're talking about 30 gallons of water. Maybe that's all right. That's fine, that's what most people do. Uh, if you want to stick it to the man, though, there's a consideration you need to think about. The city charges you for water. And I don't know the exact numbers, but let's say it's a dollar for every hundred gallons. The city says, well, you're taking our water, you're buying our water, fine, we appreciate your patronage. Where's it gonna go when you get done? It's gonna go to the sewer. So for every dollar we charge you for water, we're surcharging a dollar and a quarter sewage fee. Now maybe money's not an issue for you, and personally, it doesn't bother me a whole lot, but I do like the independence of having fresh rainwater. Now, there's a couple of options. You can buy these, they're about 90 bucks. The city gives them away if you're in the right place at the right time. I'm not really cheap, but I hate spending money that I don't need to. I went to the Home Improvement Center and bought a garbage can. $14.99, $19.99, got a garbage can. Now what we would do then is cut off our downspout. Our downspout comes down, sends the water out to the driveway, it goes out to the street to the sewer, okay? The other issue about that is combined sewage overflows. <coughs> Here's a sewer pipe. On the North Shore of Staten Island and 90% of the rest of New York City, we have what's called a combined sewage system. There's house sewers or poop sewers that go into the sewer pipe and the street catch basins drain into this combined sewer. Off the water goes, and back in the day, all that water would go into the harbor, would go into the ocean, okay? Um, in the 1970s, the Fed said, you can't do that, you can't do that. Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act. So in the 1970s, and it's funny, if Nixon didn't have his other baggage, he would have been known as the environmental president. Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, he pushed to, fund, to found the Environmental Protection Agency. So now we've added a pipe to send our sewage to the sewage treatment plant, where it's screened, put in sedimentation tanks, treated with bacteria. The water that goes into the harbor sometimes is cleaner than the water it's going into. The problem, though, is this can't handle beyond a certain capacity. So if there's a heavy, heavy rainstorm, it could rain two or three days running, red, steady drizzle, and it's not a big deal. But one heavy downpour will overwhelm this pipe, and it's set up to overflow into the harbor. So the city and the state are working on stopping that, and there's a lot of things, and one of the things is let's cut down on our storm sewer. Instead of sending that out to the sewage system, let's put it in our garden. Save water save money. So this was Rain Barrel 1.0. What you do is mark a spot and cut this out. This then would go up against the house, 
and our downspout will empty right into the barrel. Okay. Um, when you put a barrel in place, have it up in the air. Put it on a um, put it on some four, two, four by four boards, a milk crate. Put it on something to get it up in the air, because how do we get the water out? You could lift the lid, put in buckets like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, and then travel with two buckets to your garden. My friend Richie takes his electric sump pump that you use for a flooded basement, throws the sump pump in there, plugs it in, and now he has a garden hose. What I did in 1.0, uh, put spigots. You could cut that with a knife, but you're probably better with an electric drill and a spade bit. Zzz. Nice, round, even hole. The spigot has a little tap. It's a faucet. You put a steel washer, a rubber washer, put it into the barrel. Inside the barrel, another rubber washer, a steel washer, and your bolt. So now you have a waterproof seal and a faucet. And it's, if it's up, then there we go. You don't even need to be as high tech as that. When I wanted to add and catch more water from the garage, found another bucket that somebody dumped out at uh, Graniteville Swamp and drilled a hole and I have a cork. Fill the bucket up. When the bucket's full, put your cork back in place. Decidedly low tech, but it gets the job done. Our deck was originally half the size that it is now. When we extended the deck, I had to move that out from under the downspout to make room for the deck. And that gave me the opportunity to make an improvement. One of the reasons I also had to get rid of this is that because it is cheap, thin plastic, water is heavy. And eventually, this develops cracks down the bottom. Let's go around the other side of the house. Oh, by the way, you don't need to be constrained. Let's say you live in a garden apartment. Plastic bag in a wooden box in a milk crate. Here's a garden bed. Lay out a couple of beds. Put your beans, trellis them up. Some tomatoes. Tomatoes are the workhorse in most people's gardens. You could plant them in a container. You could take a five gallon bucket. And then if you want, Wrap some burlap around it, get an old bag, bring it up, put rope around to hold it up. People say, oh, what a beautiful planter you have. It's a five-gallon bucket. And where do you get them? Dumpsters. When someone's renovating a house, they have spackle, pre-made five-gallon cans. In the dumpster, when they're putting plaster in, you'll see a dozen five-gallon buckets. Pull them out, soak them for a little while, scrub them out, and it's a plastic bucket. So originally, our deck was half this size and the downspout went right into the rain barrels. Um, when we expanded the deck, we took our old back porch off and put a new deck in. That was an opportunity to go to rain barrel 2.0. Since I couldn't put the rain barrel under the downspout, like we did by the garage, I put a funnel. Now, one extra thing that I've added here, you don't have to do it, but it's nice. You get dirt, you get pollen, on your roof. It's going to run down into your rain barrels. You'll get sediment at the bottom. And once every couple of seasons, take your shop vac and clean the sediment out of the barrel. The other thing that gets in there is leaves and poly noses and twigs, and they may block up your hose. So I added this little mesh bag. This was a uh, mesh bag, a torn bag that had pool toys. So now all of this doesn't go into my rain barrel. And maybe once a season, I'll clear that out. So, funnel catches the water, 
sent it over to Rain Barrels 2.0. Let's go there. Our next iteration, Rain Barrel 2.0. Um, looks a little more high tech, a little classier. When the solar guys come and want to sell me solar panels, I tell them, well, this is the cooling system for our nuclear reactor. It's just a small reactor. Hose, people throw it away. Keep your eyes open because we're cutting pieces of hose. If you really have an issue cutting hose, um, your home improvement center sells a cheap hose. This is not high pressure. For $9.99, you can get a 20, 30 foot length of cheap garden hose. So what happens, we said, water comes through the downspout, comes out our white pipe, and into barrel number A, barrel number one. What I did the first time around, I wanted to increase capacity. I drilled a hole here and put a scuba, a snorkel uh, pipe from barrel A to barrel B, barrel one to barrel two. You could take a piece of garden hose, take your spade bit, cut a hole, and when you pull your hose through, put a wrap of electrical tape so that it won't pull out. Now these are not connected because what I have now, here are the spigots we talked about a couple seconds ago. These, I leave these open because they're connected by a T. These actually were washing machine hoses um, that I had in the basement. But you could use a regular piece of garden hose, connect it with a T, barrel A, barrel B, your output line. I don't even turn them off at night because my output line snakes along here and as long as the end of the hose is higher than the level of the water, nothing comes out. When I drop it down, there we go. So I actually could hook a garden hose to the end of this hose so long as I'm lower than the level of the water here, just be careful that you don't drop your hose or you're going to come back and find you've lost 90 gallons of water that you were planning to use. So that should be secure. An important consideration, once these are full, where does the water go? I cut a hole in the side and I have a drain. Once the water of both barrels gets to this level, the water will drain out here and go down to the garden beds, along the fence, someplace where it's not going to do any harm and it might do some good. The other thing to think about if you're making rain barrels, you want to be raising petunias. You don't want to be raising mosquitoes. And standing water can breed mosquitoes. This is cheap. It's mosquito bits. Um, what's in here is Bacillus thuringiensis. There's a matrix, I think it's corn or kibbles or something, and it's permeated with this bacteria, which is not harmful to humans. This can be used for fish ponds, can be used for livestock. They don't recommend you put it in pe water people are going to drink, just for general principles. But this is not harmful to humans. When you hear they're dropping larvicide in the wetlands, don't worry, they're not putting oils and nasty stuff. It's probably Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis. all right? Um, this is mosquito bits. What I do, it comes in a shaker bottle, and every two or three weeks, every three weeks, once a month, I shake a fistful, a handful, into each barrel. Because as the barrel's empty, some of it goes out, and I just do it again. And this will hold you for a couple of years. They also make mosquito dunks. It's the same stuff built into made like a hockey puck. And you put the hockey puck in there, and it floats and slowly dissolves over the course of your growing season, and keeps your bacteria up, keeps your mosquitoes down. Now, when my barrels are full, what I might do is take a five-gallon bucket or old water jugs and I'll put some overflow in here. And that'll give me extra capacity for the next time that it rains. And if I go on a dry spell where the barrows have emptied out, I have my backup water. Here's a cap. I want air to get in and out so it doesn't get fungusy and, and, and algae, but I don't want mosquitoes to get in. So you take vinyl tape, sticky side out, make a ring. This is crinoline material. You can buy it at a fabric store at a, at a um, hobby shop. Lay that over the top. 
and then put plastic tape sticky side in. And you just made a cap that lets the air in, keeps the mosquitoes out. So we're saving the sewers from the combined sewer overflow. We're saving money and we're preserving water. Your garden could be very, very clean.